If an asteroid the size of the one that took out the dinosaurs struck the Earth today, we would do everything we could to stop it. But what will we do? People don't realize how large asteroids can get. Asteroids are rocky remnants from the early formation of our solar system. The smallest, around a few meters across, the size of a car. Some that are 20 to 30 meters across strike the Earth frequently, but burn up in the atmosphere and cause little or no damage. Apophis is a few hundred meters across, and most asteroids are about one to five kilometers in diameter. The mass extinction sized asteroids like the one that killed the dinosaurs are about 10 to 15 kilometers across, and some of the largest can be hundreds of kilometers across. All of the asteroids in the solar system combined have less mass than our moon, with Vesta being the largest, making up about 50% of the entire mass of all the asteroids. Let's take a look at what an actual impact would look like. Four meters across, as it enters the atmosphere at 30 to 50,000 miles per hour, it encounters air and friction. It burns up in the atmosphere. The extreme pressure difference between the front and the back causes it to burst and leave a shockwave in the sky. It doesn't hit the surface. The next rock is 90 meters across. These guys are large enough to make it through the atmosphere and strike the surface, leaving a crater one kilometer wide. Next is a one kilometer wide rock. These have the power of a million Hiroshima bombs. They could completely vaporize an entire metropolitan area. Leaving a crater 14 kilometers wide. Next is a 20 kilometer wide asteroid, a mass extinction level rock. It generates a massive shock wave as it enters the atmosphere and produces winds of up to 600 miles per hour. When it strikes the surface, everything within a thousand mile radius is obliterated, leaving a 200 kilometer wide crater. 66 million years ago, an asteroid the size of about 10 to 15 kilometers wide struck the surface of the Earth and wiped out the dinosaurs. The impact was so strong, it caused shock waves to reverberate throughout the Earth's crust and caused widespread earthquakes, killing dinosaurs that way. It wasn't necessarily the immediate impact that killed the dinosaurs, although many died that way. It was the after effect Tons of dust and debris from the impact got sent out into the sky and blocked out the sun for years. Much of that soot and debris mixed in with the water in the air and acidic rain fell down onto the dinosaurs killing many that way, as well as hot magma from the impact that began to rain down. Following the impact, the soot and debris was still in the air for years to come, blocking out sun, causing the Earth's temperature to cool by 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. This stopped many plants from getting sunlight, and hence they died. This disrupted the food chain, starting with the largest dinosaurs who depended on the smallest ones the most. For decades, the largest dinosaurs would have struggled to find food eventually most of them starving to death. No dinosaurs larger than 50 kilograms survived the impact. The smaller dinosaurs, like birds, were able to survive and adapt to the changing conditions, as well as smaller mammals, which then gave rise to humans. Today, all we have are the remnants of those larger dinosaurs, their fossils, and the stark reminder that Mother Nature doesn't stop for anyone. We actually know exactly where the asteroid struck. It hit the Yucatan Peninsula, modern-day Mexico. 
At the time, 66 million years ago, this area was underwater. But it was a low-lying enough area for the asteroid to make a profound impact. It generated a huge mega tsunami with waves of up to 5 kilometers high. This would have inundated the coastlines and killed many dinosaurs this way as well. If the same impact happened today, many areas near the Gulf Coast would be completely flooded. The crater was found in the 1970s as geologists were looking for petroleum sites. This confirmed their suspicion that the KT boundary, this layer of iridium in all the geological strata across the world, aligned with this big giant impact 66 million years ago. But what are the chances of this kind of impact happening again? Scientists can see with telescopes about 34,000 near-Earth asteroids that are orbiting closely to our planet. They're called NEOs for near-Earth objects. These are asteroids and comets whose orbits bring them close to Earth's orbit. While most pose no threat, some could potentially collide with our planet. However, scientists around the world are tirelessly tracking these objects to assess any potential risks. 2,400 of these NEOs are classified as potentially hazardous asteroids, but not likely enough to be a concern. The good news is in the entire solar system, there are only about 1.2 million asteroids that are larger than one kilometer in size. For the ones larger than 100 kilometers in size, we know all of their locations, and thankfully none are a threat. For the vast majority of rocks above 10 kilometers, we have mapped out their trajectories, and none are a threat to Earth either. The asteroid 99942 Apophis is a near-Earth object that was discovered in 2004. It was given a 2.7% chance of hitting the Earth in 2029, causing a great deal of media attention. At first, scientists believed it would come close to Earth in 2029, enter a gravitational keyhole that would guarantee a hit when it swung back around again in 2036. But as of March 2021, NASA confirmed that there is absolutely zero chance the space rock known as Apophis will strike this planet in 2029 or 2036, and likely not for at least another 100 years. If Apophis were to strike the Earth, it would cause a great deal of damage. It's not massive enough to cause a global extinction, but it could do some serious damage. On April 13th, 2029, Apophis will pass less than 20,000 miles from our planet's surface, closer than the distance of satellites. During that 2029 close approach, Apophis will be visible to observers on the ground in the Eastern Hemisphere without the aid of a telescope or binoculars. But what will we do if an asteroid was headed towards Earth? What would be our options? Could we destroy it? Could we move it? Well, in 2022, NASA sent out a mission called DART, which went to an asteroid and struck its surface to see how much it would budge. The target, Didymos, a binary asteroid system. Scientists hope to alter the asteroid's orbit ever so slightly, a crucial step in planetary defense. Prior to DART's impact, it took Dimorphos, the moon asteroid, 11 hours and 55 minutes to orbit its larger parent asteroid, Didymos. Astronomers announced in October 2022 that DART had successfully shortened the orbit of Dimorphos by 32 minutes. It's a small amount, but huge if the asteroid is caught early enough such that over long distances, even a tiny budge in its path can lead to it missing Earth by a long shot. This is great news for humanity, the first time we actually have asteroid deflection technology. The only thing is, we would need about a year's heads up to find the rock and map out its trajectory to intercept it. Also, the asteroid was only about 160 meters wide, not an extinction level sized rock. But still, we have a good chance to fight an asteroid of that size. How about nuking an asteroid? Well, here's where the bad news comes. A nuclear bomb could destroy a smaller asteroid, but asteroids that are larger than 400 meters would not be easily destroyed by a nuclear bomb. The asteroids that pose a serious threat require nuclear explosives so powerful that they're more dangerous to the Earth 
than the asteroid might be. For example, a one megaton nuclear device could annihilate a stealthy asteroid as long as 400 feet. But if there were to be some kind of issue or malfunction when it comes to launching that nuclear device, it could literally blow up in our faces. And for a mile wide asteroid, the results would be far less impressive, barely putting a dent in it. We would most likely be sitting ducks to a 10 kilometer wide asteroid. However, realize the chance of that kind of rock hitting us is essentially zero. What we should really be worried about are the smaller rocks, the ones we can't see easily, the ones that sneak up on us, that could produce shockwaves on the ground. These are far more common and far harder to see. Perhaps in the future we'll have technology that will be able to deflect any asteroid, but until that time, we have to be on the lookout and continue looking up or else we might end up like the dinosaurs did. <laughs>